Welcome to Life Devotions and thank you for joining me today. I'd like to talk to you today about worshiping God and being satisfied and delighting in it. That that is a thing that you hunger for and thirst for. It's one of the greatest things that we have in this life, that we can live in communion with the Creator of heaven and earth and call Him Abba Father and enjoy fellowship with Him in the Spirit and truth. Jesus said, these are they which the Father is looking for, those who worship Him in spirit and truth. To worship God in the spirit, that our spirit is made alive with His spirit, and that we are in the truth, the reality of it. It's not a formality, it's a reality. And yes, of course, it's a formality in that it has our whole heart and it's in sincerity and truth, but oh, what a wonderful thing it is to worship God, dear friends. It's something that's available to you. It's the Holy Spirit drawing you into that intimacy with the Father that Jesus through His life in us provides as He is now the new and life-giving way into the Holy of Holies. Oh, I'm so looking forward to talk to you about all of these things. And God wants this to be real to you. He wants this to be personal to you. He wants this to be intimate to you. He wants this to be something where you can go and it's your secret place with the Most High, where you abide and stay steady and stable under the shadow of the Almighty that no evil can penetrate, as Psalm 91 talks about. But I want to take you here to Genesis chapter 4, because this worship, this fellowship with the Father and His Son is the distinguishing mark of true Christianity. If somebody would ask you, how do I know somebody is a true Christian? How do I know somebody is truly a Christian? It's because they live in fellowship with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 17, Father, the glory that you have given me, the glory of being one with you, I have given to them that even as you are in me, I am in them, so we are made perfectly one and the world may realize that you sent me and love them as much as you love me. The world doesn't know you, Father, but I do, and I have revealed you to this, these men so that the same love with which you love me, the same mighty love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. Oh, the reality of this worship in spirit and truth is phenomenal, folks. It's amazing to worship God. It's amazing. It is where you can have a refuge to find satisfaction and calmness for your own nature, for your own flesh, your own body, for your own soul. Like David would say in Psalm 103, I will bless the Lord, all my living being, all my soul, and then in Psalm, what is it, 30, verse 12, he says, Let my soul, let my living being, let my glory praise you. For, for David, he knew he was existed to give glory to God, to give praise to God. So let me take you here to Genesis chapter 4, please. And it says in verse 1, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain, and said, I've acquired a man from the Lord. And then she bore again, and this time his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, <clears throat> but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstborn of the flock and of their fat, and the Lord respected Abel and his offering but did not respect Cain and his offering, and Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry? Why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, will you not be accepted? If you do not do well, sin lies at the door, and its desires for you, but you should rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. And the Lord said to Cain, Where is Abel your brother? And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? And here we see a tragic story in most ways, but in some ways no. In what way not? you can see how Abel found delight in worshiping God. 
He found fulfillment. He found satisfaction. He found happiness in his communion with God. Why? Because he did that which pleased God. He lived to please God. He honored God with the first of the flock and the fat thereof, and it pleased God. So God revealed through Abel, Abel what was pleasing to him. And the book of Hebrews says in chapter 11 that even though he was dead, he spoke to God, his blood spoke to God. So you could see that that fellowship with the Father in worship, that worship is what opened the life-giving way to the Father. That even though he was dead, yet he lived. And friends, I want to talk to you about this because this is what distinguished Abel from Cain. You see, Cain had no delight in worshiping God. He did what was demanded or expected, but not what pleased God. He did not live to please God. Because when God said to Cain, Cain, why are you not satisfied in your fellowship with me? Why are you not satisfied in your worshiping me? If you do what pleases me, you will be equally accepted as able. But you could see, even though the opportunity was given by God to Cain, he refused the opportunity. He did not take, it, take opportunity when it was offered to him to do that which pleases God and escape the darkness that was laying at the root of his being, seeking to take dominion of him. And you could see the result of that darkness, of that sin, that evil, that it caused him to become so offended with the happiness, with the joy that Abel was experiencing, that he wanted to get rid of him. You see, that is the very fruit and nature of sin, that you begin to hate those who do not suffer the same. You begin to despise them, envy them. My father once said to me, son, envy will rot the bones. In other words, it will make you ill inside. It will make you so unhappy inside that you just want to punish everything for the way you feel. And that is the very opposite to what we see God give to us through Jesus. When John, in John chapter 1, verse 29, saw Jesus, he said, behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Of course, here we see how that was foreshadowed, that when Jesus offered himself to God, he was well pleasing. When he shed his blood for the remission of you are my sin, the spirit by which he offered himself was pleasing to God. And through that spirit, through that offering of himself through that one offering of himself he is able forever to cleanse your and my conscience from sin and make us pleasing to God bring us into that communion of fellowship and worship where we are having satisfaction delight fulfillment and friends this is interestingly is what the world is looking for it's what Cain was so angry he did not have. And yet, while God offered for him to have it, he refused it. And that is the idiosity, the absolute madness and foolishness of the very nature of sin. You have to choose. Do you choose to live to please sin, the self, the lower nature, and be offended and angry with others that are happy? and prosperous and look down on them? Or do you choose to please God and leave your life of sin and let him bring you through the offering of Jesus into that satisfaction and fulfillment in worship? This is the message I have for you. The Heavenly Father doesn't want you to live unsatisfied. The Heavenly Father doesn't want you to blame others for your lack of happiness and joy. Well, she doesn't do this for me. Well, she won't do that for me. Well, he will not do this. And your unhappiness, you lay on the shoulders of others that are often totally innocent of it, or maybe 
like Sarah, are barren from the ability to give you what you think you need to get happy. And the Lord says, no, do not seek your satisfaction in self-indulgence, in the indulgence of your own nature and flesh, but seek your satisfaction in fellowship with me, in worship, and that you find such contentment beyond what anything this world has to offer. And of course, the end result is it that you have a personal relationship with your heavenly Father that Satan cannot undermine or take from you or separate you from, for nothing can separate you from the love of the heavenly Father that you have through your communion with Jesus, through your relationship with Him. Oh friends, I just feel my heart overflowing to share this with you and to encourage you. Seek the Lord while He may be found. Call Him, call upon Him while He is near. Let the wicked man forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts like Cain. Let him return to the Lord and the Lord will be merciful and abundantly pardon, it says in Isaiah 55. Oh, I pray that the word of the Lord comes to your heart right now and says, come to me, my child. Come to me. I will satisfy you in my presence. I will fill you with the fullness of my joy. I will give you joy unspeakable and full of glory. I will take away your complaining. I will take away your self-pity. I will take away your frustrations with others that are happy and blessed and do not seem to notice that you need me. Oh, dear friend, come to me, says the Lord, and worship me in the beauty of my holiness, and I will satisfy you with my goodness all the days of your life. Have a good day.